good afternoon, everyone. This is Scott Letourneau with NCP, Nevada Corporate Planners, and welcome to another monthly training call where our goal is to help you launch your business with confidence so you have the proper foundation to get off to a fast start to profits for your business and beat the odds. And one of the most popular subjects recently in selling online is the opportunity to sell your products through Amazon, not only in the U.S., but uh, in Europe and even in Canada. And when it comes to that opportunity, there is some compliance issues with in the U.S. the sales tax and in Europe is what's called VAT, uh, Value Added Tax. And so today's training call, we're going to talk about the European VAT compliance and what are the things you need to consider to be in compliance and what are the, the steps that need to be done, and to give you an overall big picture of how that works, you can be very clear so you feel confident that whether you're a U.S. marketer wanting to go sell your products in Europe, or if you are in Europe or a different country around the world to access the European market, we're going to provide a, a great overview for you today, plus a tremendous resource that the good news is can make it very simple to keep you in compliance, because as you can imagine, some of these things aren't always quite that simple. So what I've done uh, to make it easy, especially on my part, is to invite an expert uh, who uh, is a, a head of a global company, Meridian Global Services. And my special guest today is Chris O'Shea. And Chris is an international marketing professional. And as I mentioned, he's currently at Meridian Global Services. And he uh, has quite a bit of a marketing experience to increase leads and sales and he's working with Meridian's Global Financial and Technology Solutions. And his specialties include digital and social marketing, media campaign planning, execution, public relations and communications, content marketing, channel marketing solutions, market entry strategies, and personal selling. So he's the guy responsible for developing relationships, and, and they have some uh, great relationships he'll tell more about in a minute, but he'll give you a good overview of what we need to look at so you can be successful when you're selling uh, in the European market. So I want to go ahead and welcome Chris to the call. Chris, how are you doing today? Very well. Thank you very much. That's a very kind introduction. I appreciate that. You're welcome and uh, uh, definitely well-deserving. And I should say, everybody probably recognizes the wonderful accent. Uh, Chris is uh, out of Ireland and uh, I love the, the you know, beautiful Irish name, O'Shea. So uh, uh, so he's uh, it's early my morning, a little bit at the end of the day for Chris. So I appreciate you being with us. No, absolutely. No, happy happy to be here, excited to uh, speak with you and share some of my knowledge. And hopefully it will be of benefit and of value for, um, for, uh, for everybody who's listening. Oh, I'm, I'm, I know it will be. So let's just jump right into it, Chris, is... Uh, Maybe if you could tell us a little bit more about your role's responsibility at Meridian and, of course, the focus on Meridian and, and sales tax and, and uh, VAT compliance in Europe, and, and feel free to kind of share some of the partnerships you have with some of the uh, companies that people are probably familiar with. Sure. Um, well, I'll begin by saying that I work within the marketing department at Meridian Global Services, and uh, Meridian is a global company. Uh, we have uh, offices not only in Dublin, Ireland, but in about 30, uh, 30 cities right throughout the world. Um, and uh, I myself, I'm responsible for the marketing of our compliance products, uh, VAT compliance, sales and use tax, um, and, and other compliance products as well. And um, one of the, the key ways in which we actually market our compliance products is through partnerships, is through those in the marketplace who uh, would have complementary services to ours, whereby we're not competing. And what these particular companies are trying to do is they're trying to encourage people to sell more online, to sell more, in particularly, uh, internationally. And um, we work with uh, some of the larger marketplaces, such as Amazon and, uh, and eBay, of course, um, but we work with a lot of uh, software providers as well who work directly with retailers and encourage them to um, use their software when selling internationally as well. Um, and uh, just in terms of the, the actual products themselves, 
Well, VAT compliance is something that's really, really important when it comes to selling uh, within the European Union. And, of course, you have the sales and use tax issues uh, right throughout the United States. And we also deal with the uh, with, with Canada as well, and we help uh, retailers and online sellers with their uh, goods and service tax compliance in those particular in, in that particular region. Um, I suppose just getting back to the partners and the relationships that we have, uh, really, what's important with these uh, relationships is that we're all trying to help sellers to break down the barriers that are there with uh, with international selling. It can seem quite daunting, and there can seem to be a lot that is involved, you know, whether it be um, currency issues, whether it be your logistics, um, customer service, but then, of course, the tax side of things comes into play then as well. So working with partners who are each trying to break down their own barriers um, and help uh, sellers to, to sell more cross-border is, is what it's really all about. So... Um, we uh, we work uh, we work together. There's strength in numbers, and um, and it's really all for the benefit of uh, the online seller. Wonderful. And Chris, can you comment about your your relationships when people think of selling products and services online? Obviously, they can have their own company to, company to do that, their own brand, their own store, and they're selling products all over. But a lot of people uh, will choose uh, outlets uh, that already have traffic and a massive amount of people coming to, and the two that come to mind are Amazon and eBay. Can you share a little bit of your relationship with those two companies? Um, absolutely. Um, you're right that um, it is a natural thing for companies um, to, um, to go to Amazon and to go to eBay because the audience is there. And if a company actually wants to spend, you know, a lot of money on pay-per-click advertising or affiliate marketing to drive traffic to their own web store, that can be very, very expensive. So to actually approach eBay and approach uh, an Amazon or Rakuten or um, any other larger marketplace that already has that audience that the, the brand is looking to tap into, um, you know, it's, it's clear-cut. The, the audience is there and you're not necessarily, you know, uh, having to pay for the audience up front. Um, in terms of our relationships there, um, I'll start with eBay. Um, we, we, have a, we have a partnership agreement with eBay, um, Meridian Global Services does. And uh, what we do is, um, well, eBay sellers come in many different sizes and many different varieties and categories. Um, and what we do is we help really to uh, the smaller sellers become the mid to large size sellers. Um, and what we do is we help them to really break down the barriers that are there associated with, with tax. Um, what eBay are trying to do is they're trying to encourage cross-border trade. They say that about 20% of their activity and sales are actually cross-border. That is from a merchant to, um, to an individual outside of the domestic country where the merchant is actually established, and um, and that and they want to increase that number. They want to increase it, you know, get it from 20% upwards. And um, the way they do this is through their um, CBT program, which stands for Cross Border Trade Program. And uh, this program really helps to handhold merchants when they want to sell to individuals in other countries. And, um, and that program really involves a variety of different partners, not just in the whole area of um, VAT, um, but we're looking at, they look at translation partners as well to help companies translate their listings uh, into the, uh, um, the language of where the, uh, the buyer is located. Um, and they have partners as well when it comes to logistics to try and smooth the path that's, um, that's often quite bumpy for sellers when they're trying to sell internationally. So we have a very good relationship with eBay in that respect because um, they are very much focused on uh, growth, on increasing their numbers, on getting these sellers from you know, being relatively small to, and accelerating their growth um, quite quickly. And um, being a partner of eBay um, it helps, to, uh, helps to achieve um, our goals of um, our compliance product reaching a newer audience 
but also their own goals in terms of um, growing the, the number of merchants selling online. So that's eBay. Um, the, um, the other partner is, is Amazon. And, um, and Amazon, they, um, they, they have a, a variety of different marketplaces, not just the dot-com, but they have, um, they have their five European marketplaces that are now what they call unified. So if uh, a North American seller actually wants to sell um, typically on Amazon.co.uk, because it's, they can list in English, um, at a click of a button, that particular seller can have their um, their listing then uh, translated and actually on all of the other Amazon instances, such as Amazon.de for Germany, Amazon.fr for France, and then they have um, Spain and Italy as well. So it's actually a really useful way of selling more internationally and um, and gaining more um, more more visitors really to to the online store so what amazon are trying to achieve is they're naturally trying to achieve more merchants more third-party sellers selling on their international marketplaces um but when it comes to the uh, the issue of vat and taxes often um they their sellers their third-party sellers are hesitant because there's a level of um, unawareness there's a, a lack of knowledge when it comes to tax and obviously, if there's a lack of knowledge, then there's going to be a certain element of fear. So uh, Amazon recognized this. They recognized that um, for them to actually encourage uh, third-party sellers to sell more and on their European and, and uh, Canadian and Japanese marketplaces, they needed to really break down this fear and really just move it aside and just help it not to become an obstacle to selling. So they created a... Um, a program called their external tax provider program and um, they uh, they contacted I think about 40 or 50 global uh, market leaders in the area of tax of VAT uh, compliance and they selected a handful that they decided um, uh, to uh, invite as part of this program they obviously have went through a lot of process of evaluation and vetting and they selected Meridian Global Services to uh, be one of only two tax advisors to provide um, uh, compliance um, services um, for North America and Europe. So that was a, you know, that was a big, that is a big badge of honour for us sure. to wear really at, at, at Meridian Global Services to have, um, you know, to be part of this program. This esteemed program, really, that um, the um, the uh, financial people in um, in Amazon have uh, put together. So what it means is that whenever a seller, uh, an Amazon seller, they log into um, Seller Central, which is their their interface where they can have their listings, etc. Um, they uh, they can search for Meridian Global Services, or they can search for external tax providers, and all of our details are there. Um, details about our products, um, what it involves, um, lots of FAQs and lots of other content as well that's useful for the seller. So it means that uh, it means that we're there front of mind for a seller if they uh, if they want to connect with us and ask us any questions uh, related to their expansion and selling more on the different Amazon marketplaces. So it's um, so it's a very good relationship. Um, and um, and um, we're delighted to be part of that particular program. Yeah, Chris, that's a that's a, an amazing, obviously, opportunity for your company, and it has been. And congratulations, and and uh, what a, a a a dream joint venture, strategic alliance, whatever language you'd like to use to be with a company of that nature. Out of curiosity, it maybe an opportunity if, to toot your own horn and your company a little bit is. Any guesses, and, and obviously you don't probably know exactly what their criteria was, but you know if you're only one of the two companies chosen, any thoughts as to probably what you do differently at Meridian or maybe the depth of services you have as to why they selected your company as one of the two? I think... Um I think it's really all around customer service. Okay. Um, Amazon are absolutely obsessed 
by customer service. Okay. And I think any of their their sellers can can attest to that. Um, they're you know, if you're a seller on Amazon, your feedback rating is you know is critical, and you want to make sure that your feedback is is really really good. Um, so customer service is absolutely key. So I believe that when they were evaluating um, what was on the table in front of them, that um, Meridian, what we do is we guarantee one point of contact for all countries. So um, we cover all of the European 27 countries, Canada, USA, and then other countries like Switzerland and Norway. And typically what a seller would have to do is they would have to have one point of contact in all of these different countries. Wow. And as you can imagine, that's quite fragmented. That sure. can lead to a lot of communication mix-ups, a lot of customer service complaints, problems. But at Meridian, we guarantee one point of contact for all all of these countries um, uh, in the preferred language of the actual seller. So I think that that was something that was really key for them in their evaluation. That makes total sense, yeah. That, what a huge distinction that is. Let's, uh, Chris, take a step back in the big picture because, you know, our audience that we talk to, we, we get a lot of online sellers. Some people are newbies who are going online for the first time, but they've worked with great marketers that teach them how to be successful. Some people have, go from zero sales to 100000 a month within five to six months of learning systems and marketing. Some have already been mature companies that are selling a couple million a year and they're expanding their sales. Then, then you have other markets where people have already, you know, in different jurisdictions, big companies want to take their sales to the next level. But I think at the basic level, somebody looking to start selling on Amazon or eBay uh, in Europe, and and especially even a, a U.S. marketer looking to sell in Europe, what are some of the basic misconceptions or myths about uh, the VAT in Europe? Who are, who are selling online? Sure, sure. Um, yes, unfortunately, there are a number of myths, and, and I do hear them uh, quite often. Um, and I suppose one of the first ones is that many North American uh, retailers, uh, sellers, when they're selling into Europe, they believe that if they're selling in one country in Europe, all they need is one VAT number, one registration. Um, which I can understand, you know, you're selling in the European Union, why should there, you know, surely you just need one. Unfortunately, that's actually not the case, because if you're selling to individuals in lots of different European countries, uh, sometimes you may actually need to register for value-added tax, to register for VAT in each of those countries where those individuals are actually um, located. So if you're selling on Amazon to somebody in Germany or somebody in France or somebody in Spain, you need to, you know, make sure that your um if you're um in certain circumstances and after qualifying if you need to register for VAT um, you would need to then go ahead and actually get a VAT number in these particular countries. So I suppose that's the first thing really is that um, often multiple um, VAT numbers are required in different countries, not just one for the whole of the European Union. That makes sense. Can I ask you a question about that part? Sure. Is Do you find, like in the U.S., with Amazon in the U.S., one of the first misconceptions is, well, Amazon takes care of this for me. Well, that's a general statement of what they actually take care of for you. I mean, you mm -hmm. uh, they have a big disclaimer that, you know, they're not responsible for sales tax collecting or remitting. It's your responsibility to figure out which states you need to get a sales tax number. You need to mm -hmm. plug it into their system. Then that will collect, and then your remitting is a whole different subject that you have to figure out. And so, so a basic misconception is I sell online why do I need to collect and remit sales tax to begin with? And it's quite possible to go online through Amazon and start selling and not plug in any numbers. And somebody could have been going along for six to eight months selling and yeah. not collect or remit any sales tax. Is it possible to, quote, unquote, make that mistake in Europe? In other words, could you go online through Amazon and start selling without a VAT number? 
Um, absolutely. If you're if you're um, if you're located in the U.S., you can you can go ahead and you can set up a, a, a store on any of the European marketplaces and start selling. Um, I think I think Amazon is bringing into effect uh, some some rules whereby you will need to actually enter in your VAT number uh, to be able to uh, be allowed in the first instance to actually sell. But I'm not sure where things are with that particular rule. But um, what I understand is right now you can start selling, um, uh, which is great in terms of the you know. That is, you you can start accelerating your sales and, and start growing your business. But at the same time, what we find is that often the tax side of things is an afterthought. Sure. And the whole rush, in the rush to actually start selling internationally, the whole tax side of things can, can often be overlooked and be forgotten about um, until, you know, it's it can't actually be forgotten about anymore. So you're absolutely right, uh, Scott, in that... Um, it is possible to start selling, and um, we, um, you know, obviously from a Mer- from Meridian's point of view, our advice would be to, you know, obviously um, to continue to sell, but make sure that you have the right advice and that you're, you know, you're doing things correctly from a compliance point of view, because you don't want to get into trouble with the authorities down the line and have to having to unpick your sales figures and and, and figure things out down the line. Um, but Amazon, why they created their external tax advisor program is because they very much have a hands-off approach to tax. Um, back to your disclaimer that you mentioned, Amazon is actually, you know, is and never will be um, uh, responsible for the tax side of things when it comes to a third party uh, third-party sellers selling. Um, they're, you know, they're very much, look, you know, you need to talk to a tax advisor. We've created this program. We've created, you know, we've vetted these particular companies. One of them includes Meridian. You need to speak to with these particular companies because we at Amazon, we don't take any responsibility. Um, which is, which is reasonable. Um, but again, it's back to my point that, um, there is often an assumption in the marketplace that Amazon just magically looks after it all for you when, in fact, that's actually not the case. And I think that makes a lot of sense, and I even find in the U.S. here some U.S. accountants or CPAs who, you know, sales tax is a specific niche in tax advice, and they might be able to handle sales tax in their local state or city, but I think generally when they, I've heard them say this, or a couple of them, when they think of Amazon, they're knee-jerk reaction is, oh, Amazon takes care of that for you. And and there's a, you know, in the other states in a, in a generalization, and so that can become a challenge. Let me ask you this next thought about a misconception, because I hear this also, I want to see if it's true, is, and we've gotten this on the U.S. end, where I've had European sellers want to sell through Amazon the U.S., and their belief is, and they've shipped inventory to the FBA, fulfillment by Amazon here in the U.S., so there's 16 states, and, and it gets shuffled around. And their belief is, well, I'm in the U.K., I'm physically located in the U.K., my business is in the U.K., but I'm selling through Amazon in the U.S., uh, why do I need to worry about U.S. sales tax? And, you know, there, there's no, I mean, if there was an exception like that, everybody would just form a country in some other country and sell in the U.S., and nobody would pay any U.S. sales tax. So, to me, it's like in life. If it seems too simple, there has to be something we're missing. So, and of course, that's you know that's not the case. And I'm sure it's similar that if if an American company is saying I want to sell in Europe, well, I'm here in the U.S. I'm going to sell in Europe. I'm not even physically there. <clears throat> What's the big deal? Well, you still got to apply by the rules there. Now, some people will take it a step further, which I think is a big mistake, and they they make this comment as. Well, I'm over here. They're in this country, that country. Are they going to come chase me in the U.S.? Well, you know, I, I, you know, I'm sure Chris, you'd feel the same. We're not recommending anybody do that. Of course, you want to be in compliance, no, do no, what's right. No. Of course, so you absolutely, absolutely want to, yeah, you absolutely want to be in compliance. But I hear these things from marketers, and I think that's a very big mistake to thinking that. You know, and and it may be true. There's a particular state in the U.S. that doesn't have the financial resources to go chase you in another country for for a couple thousand dollars of sales tax. But 
you know, you don't know if it connects to coming to the U.S. and the border. So do you want to yeah. comment on that? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you see, the thing is that the tax authorities um, in the U.K., Germany, France, and other European Union countries, they do actually have the resources. Um, they do actually put a lot of time, effort, and money um, into actually uh, clamping down and, and you know, um, online uh, merchants and actually taking them to account. In fact, um, HMRC, which is Her Majesty's uh, Revenue and Customs Service in the United Kingdom, they have um, they have specific spe- excuse me specific branches um, uh, and uh, teams that are set up that are just focusing specifically on um, this consumption tax, sales tax, value added tax. And what they do actually is they do mystery purchases. So they will go online onto Amazon or eBay and they will actually pretend to buy uh, products. And they will see how the VAT is actually treated at the point of checkout. And they have sophisticated techniques. And if they do actually suspect that um, that a merchant or a seller is actually not, you know, not actually uh, applying the correct tax uh, rate or the tax code, then they get suspicious. And there are agreements between different international governments uh, as well uh, about the sharing of information. Um, so uh, HMRC would have uh, different um, different agreements, bilateral agreements. Uh, with other international governments whereby they would share uh, details about, okay, uh, who's selling online, how much tax have they taken in, where has that been declared as well. And um, and this sharing of information uh, by governments is actually helping every, each of them to um, to really focus in and, 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 and really pinpoint those who are actually avoiding collecting the tax. And um, and then they're they're holding uh, companies to account who are outside of their own legal jurisdiction, well, outside of their own taxing jurisdiction as such, um, and um, they're being quite successful as well. So there's a lot of this that's happening at an intergovernmental level that somebody um, you know who's just selling on Amazon would be totally unfamiliar with. Um, but we have heard many, many um, cases, and people have uh, companies have approached us, and they've said, "Look, you know, we've been selling, um, we've been selling on Amazon.co.uk, um, but we, ha- you know, and we're not from the UK. We don't have a business in the UK as such, whereby we don't have salespeople on the ground. We don't have an office. We don't have a branch. But um, the the authorities in the United Kingdom." they have found out that we are not actually um, collecting and declaring our tax for, for the UK. And we have received a letter from them. Can you help us? And in that kind of a situation, we would step in and we would mediate and we would you know, um, represent the actual seller. But it can, it can start to become you know, difficult and time-consuming and, of course, expensive. So I suppose my message is that if a seller feels as though, look, I don't. I don't have an office in the UK. I don't have an office in in Europe. I don't. You know. I don't. Um, you know. We don't have salespeople there. Whatever. Um, just because that is not the case, does not mean that uh, you uh, you're exempt from collecting uh, the tax in that particular country and remitting that to the the local government. So that's something just to be quite well aware of. Um, and um, it's it's it's. Uh, that kind of a thing is, is quite unknown, I feel, but um, it's something to be conscious of. Yeah, very good. I'm, I would just wanted to be clear and kind of get out of the way because that's a couple big misconceptions I've heard, so we're very clear about compliance. How about another situation where if, let's say, somebody in in the U.S. who's selling through Amazon, if they have a, uh, let's say they have a customer in the U.K. purchases from the U.S. website is, you know, so now I have a customer in the U.K. who purchased some, bought one of my products on Amazon in the U.S. Do I have a responsibility to that in, in the U.K.? And then if not, does the customer have to pay it out of its own pocket at the end of the day? Well, I suppose the uh, the answer to that would be um, it depends. Okay, sure. <laughs> and um, is uh, and. It, it, it does really depend. It depends on the uh, logistics flow that's involved. 
Um, often, uh, what happens is that um, uh, UK customer, private individual purchase for, purchases from Amazon.com, and um, the uh, the seller or the merchant in the US um, will send it with uh, DHL or um, UPS or one of the other courier services. So um, and uh, so, what happens in that particular situation is that the product arrives on the doorstep of the UK um, buyer, and uh, they are asked to actually pay the the VAT on the doorstep before taking delivery of the the product. So, I mean, if I'm in the UK and I've waited two weeks for my pair of jeans to arrive from the US, and I think that I've actually you know got a, a bargain, a good deal because I've purchased from the US. And now I see that an extra 20% is being demanded of me at the doorstep, and I've after waited two weeks. I'm probably not happy about that, yeah. um, because because my my perceived saving is actually gone. I've waited a long time, and I probably won't actually order from that particular seller in the U.S. again. So in that kind of a situation, if it's uh, been shipped di- shipped directly with a courier from the U.S to the UK consumer, it's the UK consumer who is responsible for the VAT. Now, things become more complicated as um, a logistics flow gets more complicated. So, if a a US seller, if they they want their products to be closer to the consumer and if they they want to make sure that the consumer actually gets their product the same day, next day, or the following day, well, then they probably actually need to have their products located in a warehouse, you know, within the UK or within Germany or whichever market that they're selling. And in that kind of a situation, what happens is that once the products enter the um, the country in question, um, then those products are actually, um, um, the VAT is actually applied to those particular products. So it would mean that... Um, if the U.S. seller has products sitting in a warehouse in the U.K. and a U.K. customer purchases those particular products, well, then they're subject to 20% VAT. And the seller in the U.S., even though they don't have any offices or salespeople on the ground in the U.K., they are liable for collecting that 20% um, VAT in the U.K. and then actually giving that to the, the uh, tax authorities in the U.K. So... Depending, just getting back to your original point, depending on the actual uh, logistics flow and the fulfillment model, um, either the customer or the seller would be liable for the um, the European VAT. But if a seller is not clear about this, and you know, there's many other, there's many many different types of logistics flows and uh, fulfillment situations. Um, look, it's, it's best to speak with a, an expert and to get a, to get a high level view of your logistics flows and to make sure that um, you're collecting the the tax if it is deemed that you actually need to collect it. But I'll just talk about um, uh, FBA as well because obviously Amazon, their fulfillment by Amazon um, program and uh, network of fulfillment centres. Uh, are, are all over Europe, and what, what they want to do is they obviously want to make sure that um, the product is within the country in question where the, the product is being sold to. Um, Amazon don't want somebody in the UK waiting a few weeks for a product to turn up. Um, you know, they want to actually have the product in their warehouse so that if somebody in the UK purchases a product, that is going to be with them pretty quickly. So, um, with so with the situation of fulfilled by Amazon, if a North American seller has products in a warehouse in the UK or Germany or France, well, then that automatically triggers um, the need for the um, the US or Canadian seller to collect the local VAT, and then they would have res- responsibility to then pass that or remit that particular tax to the the local. Um, authority in Europe and that's um, that's a big thing that we get asked quite a lot because we have a lot of um, a lot of sellers who are um, North American um, where they're established and they are using FBA warehouses right throughout Europe and um, they they realize now okay you know we need to um, we need to register for that in the relevant countries and then 
and, and that makes sense. So we have a you know a, a different kind of layout there in Europe with all the different countries and and what happens with you know the different languages and different currencies? How does that come into play? Um, well, with the different currents, uh, sorry, with the, I'll start off with the languages. Um, because all of the all of the tax authorities um, in Europe um, typically have different languages, um, they want all of their correspondence, paperwork, and red tape to be done in their language. Sure. Um, so the French authorities, they will. If you're interacting with the French authorities, everything needs to be in French. The German authorities, everything needs to be in German. So, obviously, from um, you know, from the point of view of a U.S. seller, you know, how do they get around this? It's it's quite difficult unless they have the in-house uh, technical expertise, financial expertise, and linguistic expertise, which often just is not the case at all. So, this is why it will be important for them to work with somebody or with a with a, a company, a tax partner, who would have the in-house uh, linguistic capabilities for all of this. Um, so that's that's one of the first things. Um, um, in Meridian Global Services, we have um, we have uh, hundreds of um, technical financial people who would speak the native languages of each of the different um, European member states, and who would um, who would be able to complete all of the necessary paperwork. Um, and, and 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 manage the relationship then with the tax authorities on behalf of the actual seller. So, so it is quite difficult from a language point of view, um, uh, unless you're working with a partner. Um, and then from a currency point of view as well. Well, um, we work with um, a company called World First, and World First, they're a great company, and what they do is they provide um, help and assistance around uh, uh, around currencies, um, around uh, understanding uh, fluctuations, how to you know, hedge against um, any fluctuations that may actually adversely affect the seller, um, and they can also help to set up uh, different uh, currency bank accounts as well. So, um, so the way it will work is that if you're a North American seller and you're selling on um, Amazon in the UK, uh, you will get paid in British pounds. Um, they can uh, set up a, a, their own World First bank account. Um, those British pounds could go into that particular bank account. And then um, if you have agreed a particular um, uh, currency exchange rate with them, they can convert that back into um, U.S. dollars for you. So, so they're a great company, and I'd highly recommend um, any any listeners if they're looking for um, assistance when it comes to currencies uh, to to reach out to to World First. And and, and that's a, that makes a lot of sense because those are two things I think that would come up with the opportunity is is to sell in. The European Union and in the different countries is how am I going to handle that? And that's again why you need a company like Meridian that has all this handled and turnkey. Our goal is just to bring this to your awareness. These are some of the things that kind of come into play. But the good news is you have somebody that can help kind of manage and go through these uh, uh, processes. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm kind of glancing through a couple of the questions. I think we've uh, addressed some of those. Is um, any, what are some of the latest developments of, of, of VAT and what's happening or any cases that people should be aware of? Um, I suppose in terms of the latest developments is that um, I'll, I'll bring it back to the different um, authorities, um, the tax authorities. Um, what's happening, um, and, and then is also at a, a European level, the people in Brussels, um, they are they are passing legislation actually, or at least there's legislation, European legislation in the pipeline, that will um, will make it uh, mandatory uh, for um, uh, marketplaces to actually open their books and show, um, okay, 
you know, our third party, we have uh, our third party sellers, and this is the kind of volume and values that they're actually selling in different marketplaces. Now, I'm not sure where things are with that particular legislation, um, but I know it's been definitely discussed, and I think it, it might be rooting its way through in time. So that's that. That is quite a quite a big thing because all of a sudden the uh, the different European tax authorities they will be able to go to the different marketplaces and say, look, you know, we want you know, to see who is selling into our country. We want to be able to see um, you know, what kind of tax we should be collecting. And um, you know, with this uh, legislation coming down the line, they will have the powers to do that. So, so, so from that perspective, in time, there, it, you know, there will be no avoiding the topic at all. <laughs> Um, and um, and and I suppose this is why my message is that it's better for a seller to you know to get the relevant advice and find out where they need to actually register for VAT now, because it's something that will you know will they'll have to address in time, and it's something that at a European level is starting to filter down from the top, um, and and will eventually reach the seller. Um, uh, and, and what they're actually selling in different countries. So that's 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 quite a big thing. Um, I talked as well about um, I talked as well about the different authorities that are actually sharing information uh, between themselves, and um, and uh, they uh, they're lo- they're they're using a lot of technology as well to actually pinpoint. Um, you know um, who's selling where, and um, they're taking good estimates of what they should actually be owed as well. So there's a lot of kind of developments there that you know would not be known as such by you know a, a, an ordinary seller who's just trying to sell their products um, on, on Amazon or eBay. But um, it's starting to come down the line, and um, it's it, it, it's. You know, the whole tip, the whole topic of VAT and and sales and use tax compliance, it really can't kind of be avoided um, in the in the short to medium term. That makes a lot of sense, and I suppose one of the reasons probably is if we look over the last five years, the amount of sales that people do online from five years ago. I mean, I mean, I would be guessing, but I'm sure it's three to four to five times the amount of what we did five to six years ago. With that, you know, guesstimate. And, and I'm sure for those reasons, when they used to be just brick and mortars, you go to the brick and mortar and that, but now people are selling all the stuff online. I'm sure there was a, a period of a few years where they're probably saying, hey, we're losing out on revenue here, all these online sales. Either people don't know what they're doing, they have misconceptions, or they're just outright not complying. Uh, so I'm mm-hmm. sure it's been a worthwhile for them to invest in this infrastructure of technology to kind of more uh, help find the people or let them know you have to be in compliance is that That sound pretty close the case yeah Yeah, no no that's 100 percent the case um and you also have to remember that this is actually quite a political thing as well because you know tax is tax is a political topic and you know um tax policies for politicians can win or lose elections as well sure so um so when it comes to elections um uh, uh, you know, um, a political party, they may say, look, we are not going to touch income tax, we are not going to touch corporation tax, we may lower them, that might win them votes. But nobody talks about sales taxes, nobody no, nobody talks about value-added taxes um, to such an extent because, um, you know, they're indirect taxes, they're the kind of, you know, they're not reflected in your paycheck at the at the end of the month. Yes. Um, so, but it's still tax. I mean, it still generates billions and billions for the different coffers and the exchequers of the European governments. So this is why the, the different tax authorities they're so focused now on collecting VAT and these taxes from um, from online sellers, both domestically and internationally, and they're focusing on it, you know, so much. Um, because it kind of stays out of the political limelight to a great extent, and um, it's seen as you know it, it, it's 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 seen as something that's not only financially rewarding for the for for you know the um, the tax intake of a comp- of a country, but 
it kind of keeps on the side of their politicians as well, so how we say. That makes sense. And a thought comes to mind with the number, especially being in the U.S., the number 20%, because U.S. and sales taxes could be anywhere low end 6% up to maybe as high end as 10%. Uh, 20% sounds kind of high. Is that is it been that number for a while? Um, it, that is kind of, I'd say, that the median amount. Is it okay? Some, yeah, there are some countries whereby it's quite high. So in Hungary, I believe it's 27%. Wow. And um, I know in Luxembourg, I, I'm not sure, but I think it could be around 17%. Uh, Germany is 19%. Some of the Nordic countries in Scandinavia, it's kind of mid to high 20s as well. So depending on the actual country in question, um, you know, they all have uh, they all have different different rates. Um, but I suppose, yeah, probably 20, 21, 22 is kind of the median, yeah. Interesting. So as you can imagine, it's a lot of tax to take. Sure. And I think you mentioned before, Chris, when we spoke with different in in the US market is when you buy something you see a price then you go to pay for it online at the shopping cart sales tax is added or you go to the cash register then they add sales tax i know my young daughter when they, oh it's only $14 well we haven't put sales tax yet and she's short a, you know a couple bucks <laughs> but in in Europe it's different the sales tax it, it's all inclusive in the price yes that is the way that it is um and I believe that there is um, European uh, legislation in place right throughout the European Union whereby it says that um, if a seller is selling something to uh, an individual in any EU member state, that the final, full and final price has to be absolutely transparent from the get-go. Um, and that is to include VAT. Now, are there services that... Do you have a category where if it's a service, VAT does not apply? Is there, you know, for in the U.S., if you have a service, you don't have sales tax, but if it's a product or sales tax, is that similar or is it different? There are there are different tax rates. Um, so we spoke about the 20% kind of median, um, and that will be what, what you call your standard VAT rate. But there are uh, reduced VAT rates. And in a lot of different European countries, and the reduced VAT rate would be on things in certain countries like children's children's shoes, um, newspapers, um, certain pharmaceutical products, um, maybe also food items as well. So, depending on the actual category, uh, many of those uh, can be actually subject to the reduced VAT rate, which could be maybe three, four percent. But again. Each individual European country would have its own uh, reduced fat rate. Very interesting. And then what if somebody, for example, there's a lot of online marketers uh, all throughout Europe, but if they're in the U.K. and they provide a coaching service, if they're coaching, uh, which is a service, is that subject to VAT or not? I could not tell you off the top of my head okay. now, I'm afraid. No problem. That's okay. Um, but... I'm very curious because I know in the U.S. we have some issues about well, if it's a service, there's no sales tax. It's pretty black and white. But then you get into, well, what if I have a piece of software and I download it in the U.S. and I add training to it? Well, then maybe all of it becomes subject to sales tax, and there's some gray areas there. So a lot of products in the U.S. are because they're they're just, you know, somebody's providing services. They don't charge sales tax. Uh, so I didn't know if there's any parts of that are similar in, in, in Europe. That there is a similarity. Absolutely, there there is VAT on um, certain services, um, and if those particular services do have a product element, well, then depending on the country and how a specific country categorizes them, they may be VAT exempt or zero rated, as we call it, uh, or they may be subject to the standard VAT rate. Again, it depends on the service. It depends on the combination of the service and the product, and you know we have we have many many um consultants and experts sure. here who can who can advise on yeah. on, on the treatment of that with different services and 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 that makes sense and uh and, and cuz you know it's it's really important to be in compliance that's why you want to work with somebody like Meridian Global Services you know you know in a few minutes I'll give you the contact information that 
you can, you know, kind of connect with someone and discuss your situation. They can kind of let you know how they can help you. We'll go into more detail in a minute about that. So we definitely have a resource for you coming up, and you definitely want to talk to their team and the experts. We're just giving you kind of a general overview and uh, don't want to be giving you any specific uh, tax advice one way or the other, but just an overview here, and that's why you're going to talk to uh, the, the team at uh, Meridian Global Services and the right people in the right departments. But to touch upon some of these big picture uh, questions. Uh, Chris, is do you want to explain a little bit of the process if somebody wanted to contact your firm? And again, you are in Ireland, but you have offices in the U.S. and in Canada, so uh, we're not just talking about a European marketer contacting you. It could be any somebody anywhere in the world that wants to maybe sell in the U.S., sell in the U.K. or Canada. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I suppose the our, our main office um, that services the North American continent is in New York, um, White Plains, New York. So uh, we would have many of our consultants who would be experts in not just um, European VAT, but also uh, Canadian GST and uh, sales and use tax across the U.S., and they would be located in that particular office. We also have an office on the West Coast as well in San Francisco. So if anybody's on the uh, on the West Coast, we can uh, connect you with our with our people on the ground there. And um, just in terms of how the process actually works, um, well, I suppose the way it would work is that we would uh, recommend to have an initial conversation with one of our consultants. And uh, and what the consultant would do is they would speak about um, speak with the seller uh, about uh, their sales and especially the uh, the logistics because uh, logistics and supply chain and VAT and tax they go hand in hand. So what the consultant would do is they would build a picture in their mind of where products are being shipped from and to and who's paying and who's collecting, and then after that initial conversation they would be able to uh, to inform the seller or the merchant if they would have a if they would need to register for for VAT or or, or, or a sales tax in a particular jurisdiction and um and then if the seller decides to uh, to go ahead uh, with becoming uh, VAT registered uh, we would then request uh, a number of documents um really to help um proceed with the entire process. Um, what, we do, we, what we would do is we would then uh, represent the actual seller. We would interface with the tax authorities. Um, we would manage on an outsourced basis all of, the, all of the paperwork, all of the red tape that would be involved. And of course, we would do that in the native language. Um, we have the, uh, the appropriate in-house experts uh, when it comes to the language side of things as well, um, and um, and uh, you know we can keep uh, the the merchant informed of any developments of any changes. Um, we have a particular technology as well, an online uh, web portal, where our sellers can actually log on and see, okay, uh, you know where um, in which countries uh, is the tax due, what are the deadlines, how much needs to be paid. So they can keep on top of, you know, from a cash flow point of view, they can they can see uh, from a particular uh, web interface, you know, what the state of play is with their tax in different jurisdictions. So that's a definite value add for our, our clients. They find it really, really useful like that. Um, and I suppose, I mean, just just in general, if, if it is, discovered uh, through a call with one of our consultants that uh, a company uh, seller is uh, liable to uh, to register for VAT or collect uh, and collect VAT in a particular jurisdiction. Um, it's best to just go ahead and, and get registered. Now, the process can take up to four weeks, um, and after four weeks, um, the seller is issued with a uh, registration number and that's the key. That's the key that that allows them then to keep compliant on an ongoing basis. So, um, so I suppose that's it really. In summary, is that we can, uh, you know, after an initial conversation with a consultant, we can we can take things from there and help um, help the seller handhold them through the entire process. Wonderful. And and is part of that 
if people are going to be on Amazon FBA and they have to go in the seller central and there's usually you know if you you know what I'm hearing is you can you know consult with them help them get the 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 VAT number or in the US the sales tax number and then they got to go to seller central to you know update their tax settings is that something also depending upon the jurisdiction you could help them advise them through that process absolutely we're we're very familiar with the uh the internal mechanics and structure of the Amazon marketplaces um so absolutely we do that all the time we can advise them um you know where within the Amazon interface, where within the marketplaces, where within uh, the, you know, the portion of Seller Central, all of that would take place, and we can we can guide them through that. Absolutely. Yeah, wonderful. And so let me give out everybody a, a URL I put together. It's a it's a redirect to a landing page that's set up by uh, Meridian Global Services, where you can kind of opt in, and then uh, you know go through the process to request a consultation then Somebody will follow up with you within, we'll say, you know, two to three business days, depending upon volume of activity. So that URL, if you go to budurl, B-U-D-U-R-L dot com, again, budurl dot com forward slash sales tax compliance. So you don't need www. You can just do budurl dot com forward slash sales tax compliance. That'll take you to a landing page uh, that will. Uh, get you to you know to opt in register and then the team at uh, Meridian Global Services will follow up with you and find out what your needs are and where you need support then they can go through their menu of services and quote you fees and and you can choose how much support you want whether you want them to get sales tax or VAT numbers whether you want them to you know do compliance for you on a monthly quarterly basis or however it is in the country or jurisdiction which we would recommend because the big picture, I would focus on your marketing and sales and let the pros keep you in compliance from a sales tax or VAT tax point of view so you can do what you do best. And, Chris, with that, one other thought comes to mind is some people may have realized, oh, gee, I had some misinformation. I've been selling for six months, nine months, a year in Europe, in the U.S., and I haven't been collecting sales tax, I haven't been collecting or remitting VAT tax, will you help me, quote unquote, get into compliance, you know, in the U.S. I know we call it a voluntary compliance, is that something that would uh, a marketer could do is reach out to your company and and kind of, uh, so to speak, they can kind of uh, confess that, oops, I don't think I did it properly, but I, I want to get back into compliance because my business is growing, I'm selling more and more, and I don't want to find out five to six years later I got some VAT or sales tax issue? Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, We deal with uh, online sellers all the time who have been um, selling um, in a variety of different countries, and it's only now that they're actually getting on top of their their VAT issues. Um, And what we do is, because we have such a close and and good relationship with each of the different tax authorities um, in all the different countries, um, what we were able to do is uh, represent the uh, the seller and go to the tax authorities and help to um, um, negotiate, help to um, you know to bring all of their tax affairs back into compliance, back into order, and um, and 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 manage that then going forward. So you're right, it does happen quite often, um, but um, that doesn't mean that it can be avoided. It's best to I suppose put your hand up. Uh, make a voluntary disclosure, uh, work with Meridian, and we can we can take care of the rest. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Chris, uh, I appreciate everything you've shared today, all the details, your experience, and uh, and the the breadth of your knowledge of working with the uh, Meridian Global Services in your capacity and the marketing and expanding the partnerships. And we feel privileged to be able to work with you and refer our clients uh, to you to make sure they're taken care of as our goal is to help people launch their business with confidence, make sure it's done right. Any final thoughts or things you'd like to share today before we finish up? Um, I suppose my final thoughts is that um, it it might seem a little overwhelming when it comes to the whole issue of tax, um, but if a seller is very focused 
on selling internationally, um, selling to a global audience and using marketplaces and their web stores. To do that, it's best really to, to leave the tax um, to, the, to, to a professional partner so that, um, so that the, the seller can get on and, and, and worry uh, about making sure that the product gets to the customer in the right condition at the right time. And I think that makes a lot of sense, and that's a great final point to, uh, you know, it's just, it, the good news is that uh, you'll be able to be an international business selling at these different jurisdictions. Uh, Meridian Global Services will help you keep in compliance. So you have a partner there that can look out for that, and uh, really it's, uh, you know, the world's becoming a smaller place, and the global opportunities are not just for the mega large corporations. It's uh, It's really opened up to almost everybody, and so definitely – there to take advantage of that and again thank you Chris and for all you've done and for Meridian Global Services your company and the partnerships that you've forged to allow people to really reach their dreams and goals and be able to sell internationally with you know you know who knows one hundredth of the infrastructure you probably had to have 15 years ago to make this happen so really grateful for all you do no, thank you. It's been a pleasure, and I hope uh, this information has been useful for for the listeners. I'm, I'm sure it has been, and uh, they'll definitely I can speak for them. They'll appreciate it. So I appreciate you, Chris. And so thanks everybody for listening today. Hopefully, you got lots of distinctions. And again, you can go to budurl.com forward slash sales tax compliance. Budurl.com forward slash sales tax compliance. You'll have a landing page to get a hold of the Meridian Global Services, to go through the process to get the support you need to be in compliance. And uh, that will end the call today. for today. Again, my name is Scott Letourneau with NCP, and everybody have an outstanding day.